Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Proper Vagna, this is Crusader Kings 3 and I'm very happy to present you yet another very rare achievement and make it so that you can get it without much hassle and without having to spend much time. This one is quite simple in how we do it, although it would take much much longer if we did it in a different fashion. So the achievement that we're going to be doing today uh, is the so-called, where the hell even is it, there it is, give a dog a bone starting as Matilda di Canossa in 1066, rule Italy, so rule the kingdom of Italy, it, it can also just for the record be some family member of yours, it doesn't actually matter, have 50 dynasty members and found a holy order. I can do all of those within easily within the lifetime of Matilda di Canossa. I will tell you that this achievement is a bit buggy if you do it regularly primarily because right now if you save an Iron Man game that is saved in the cloud and then you reload it will count this as a forfeit pretty much as a failure in this achievement so I thought to myself you know what let's do it so fast that we don't have to reload that we don't have to go when mum says there is dinner on the table instead we're going to be done long before dinner is on the table. So, let's take a look. Now I will tell you that I am really in love with the way that this can be sped up and cheesed because it is just so, I don't know, so natural, so organic. We don't need to change any of the rules, by the way. Just make sure that you are, of course, an Iron Man. Um, the interesting thing about this cheese that we're going to do here is that I looked around, I tried so many methods, becoming the Empress, becoming Muslim, and I said to myself, there has to be an easier way. And I found an easier way, and I am very hopeful that this is a way that is actually possible or is going to be possible even in future versions of the game. Now, the opening move is essentially you finding a spouse, of course, in a matrilineal marriage, and they have to be insular Christians, that is the Celtic form of uh, Christianity, and lustful, because that makes it so that you will, of course, have as many children as possible. Now, we, you know, we just pick any of these, none of these are really important. Who we pick does not matter. Next, make sure, go check your bishop if he is good, so that means 10 or above. He will be able, if he fabricates a claim for you, to have a chance that he will fabricate a claim on the entire duchy. What we want is a claim on the duchy of beautiful, beautiful Lombardy. Um, I focus on the main focus here just so that in the hopes that the Emperor would name me the uh, steward, I don't think he did that here, but as the steward you make more money so it is worthwhile, you know, to have that stat a bit higher as Matilda. So how does this work? What do we do? Essentially, we need a claim on Lombardy, but I will tell you if your bishop is bad, don't worry about it, we're going to get to that later. As you can see, this is our family and I want to point out that this is not an achievement about your house di Canossa, it is an achievement about your dynasty. Meaning we can use every single one of our dynasty family members that hangs around right there. As you can see here, I'm going on a pilgrimage immediately because we want to convert to insular Christianity. I will tell you that this is such a godsend. Insular Christianity is so damn strong. If you go to Jerusalem, you pick up enough piety to easily then immediately convert via your husband to insular Christianity. Now, I got very lucky here. I will say that I got very lucky and immediately got a claim on Lombardy. I will tell you though, this is not required. Getting it this early actually means nothing because we will not go to war against Lombardy until Lombardy creates a second duchy and that is the second duchy of Genoa. They always do it eventually so just you know keep an eye on the titles and wait until they get ready to do it. The thing about this is with the way that we do it we need essentially Lombardy with that war and then another county. Those are the requirements for us to be able to actually found the kingdom of Italy. So I just went ahead and said, hey Pisa, you had a good run, I'm going to get a normal county claim on you. Feel free to do that right away, if you have a, big, a, a bad bishop then absolutely do not start fabricating a claim on Lombardy, do Pisa immediately instead. Now as you can see here, I have now a different bishop. That is because we are now insular Christian, I just converted on screen as you saw right there. Now that this has happened, what you want to do is look around in your family members, most of them are part of your realm, they are your vassals, they hang out, hang out with your vassals, make sure that they marry and if possible make sure that the women marry matrilineally so that every single child will be of your dynasty. Let me explain the insular Christianity cheese and you can see I'm already going for Pisa here so all is good in the world, that is the county that we need and now it's only Lombardy. How does this work? Essentially in insular Christianity there are two benefits, first of all men can have a total of four spouses, meaning there are secondary spouses it's totally legal and the Emperor won't hate you because you're still technically speaking Christian. This is very beneficial for any living male member of your dynasty. It's so good, it's just so so powerful. Um, the other positive side of this is that the clergy can marry. This is powerful. If you convert to insular Christianity and your bishop is bad, just marry him off to a different court in a matrilineal marriage to, for example, a lowborn lady and he will be gone and you get a new bishop for free. Meaning there is no RNG in the skill of your bishop, you can simply marry him away and generate a new one. It is so good and you can see me here, uh, by the way, checking whether he creates the Duchy of Lombardy. I think he does it fairly late, so I'm not going to get involved in this. I saw that he 
Has an ally, if I'm not mistaken. I, I was looking around here looking for allies. Yeah, that's right. I, I was looking for Bohemia so that I could then declare the war. It's 1074, and I believe it is now time for the war against the Duchy of Lombardy. There you go. He has two duchies, and this is good for the following reason. If he has two duchies, every single holding that he has in the Duchy of Lombardy immediately becomes your holding when you win the war. If you defeat him and he only holds Lombardy, granted you get enough counties immediately since you also get Genoa into your realm so that you can create uh, the Kingdom of Italy, but if you defeat him and he still has a duchy, his capital changes and you take four whole provinces. Why is this so good? Let me explain this. In Insular Christianity, any count will have his primary wife and then take a second wife. Any duke will have his primary wife and take two seconds wives and any king but I won't get to that will have three secondary wives meaning every single family member that you get married will have at the very least two wives and possibly once you are the king also actually three wives it is so good to speed up the rate of generating new family members and this is essentially what speeds this up so so much just by giving your family members you can see I'm going through the menu here the menu is a real pain in the behind to actually operate just because it look at this it's just like the entire screen is taken over my god but this is just so so good Essentially, it makes it possible that your single family that exists, I think 16 members that are alive at the start here, generate so, so many of your fe uh, fellow family members. It is really, really good. Just give every single male family member of your family land, preferably, of course, uh, starting with the ones that are already 16 or older so that they can immediately marry. The big benefit here, again, of insular Christianity is you can literally marry off bad bishops, get a better one, and then generate a claim on Lombardy, and you can have your families uh, with a much better standing because they are in a position where they can have multiple wives. Now, you can see I became a king. I thought about it here, and I'll be honest with you, I should have done it. Um, I didn't give him the Duchy of Lombardy because I wanted to keep Parma, but uh, Pavia, I mean, but I believe had I given him the Duchy here, it could have been done even earlier with this achievement just because, well, you know, he would have had two secondary wives. And you can see right here, I'm essentially going around marrying off families members making it so that it is a matrilineal marriage so that they can get children as soon as possible as soon as they come of age definitely make sure that every single one of your family members is married you can see also i got italy under control i mean again it's just very easy you just need lombardy and then another county in this case pisa and then you already have the first requirement there and once you are italy of course you can see the spam right here the emperor will send you a grand vassal request for well all of that land that now is freely under your control Again, at this point, we already have everything down that you effectively need to do. I'm just making sure that I'm marrying everybody off. I will also take a vow of poverty so that we actually reach level 3 of devotion because that is required to found a new holy order, which is uh, not that not that tall a task. I think I didn't even need to take the vow of poverty. If you go on the pilgrimage uh, the first time and then 10 years later on another pilgrimage, you should already have enough piety, at least in my experience. You can see I'm just very diligent checking on marrying family members of making it so that every uh, male family member is landed and so on and so forth. If you do that, then you can finish it even before me. I think it takes me uh, a total of like 24 years, I want to say, and then it's effectively done. But yeah, this achievement was a lot of fun to do because again, I thought uh, into a lot of directions, right? I thought about the fact, hey, Muslims can have multiple wives and so on and so forth. I even thought about gender flipping because if everybody that is a ruler is a woman, we could take multiple multiple husbands, but let's be really, there are more children in having multiple wives compared to having multiple uh, husbands, just because, well, of course, you have only one womb, but your concubines or, you know, your partners have uh, multiple wombs. Now, here you can see that we will be able to actually create a beautiful order after we went on pilgrimage again. I was so free as to give them the barony of Canossa. That is, of course, our home barony. I thought it would only be fair if we handed that over to them. And there you go, non nobis domine pops yet another achievement, makes it so that the <laughs> Order of St. Patrick, that's hilarious to me, the Order of St. Patrick is now in control, and that means we are two out of three. Right now, we only need the 50 living uh, family members, and again, at this point, once you have the Holy Order, I started doing this, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it earlier, but as at this point, once you start the Holy Order, just simply start seducing people, because the worst that can happen is that effectively somebody gets mad, the church says you lose a level of devotion, but level of devotions mean nothing to us anymore, now that we are, of course, uh, in the position of having founded the Holy Order. If you lose them earlier, so that's why I'm saying don't seduce people, because if it does come out that you're an adulterer, it will lead to the fact that, uh, you know, you're looking at losing a level of devotion, which makes founding the Holy Order impossible. If you then go around after the Holy Order has been founded and just seduce the hell out of everybody, I think I seduced a bunch of family members here, which is quite creepy, but if you do that, that just means that you have a guaranteed chance to get uh, pregnant quite frequently, making it so that you also can have a bunch of children that, of course, contribute to the total amount of children 
going around in your family. Uh, all of this, again, very, very simple to do. All of your family, your dynasty members are vassals or even in your court at game start, meaning you have full control over them. I do want to point out, and this is an important thing, um, if you give land to your sons once they grow up, if you have some early, you can make it so because you are their mother that you can actually give them all four spouses that are possible. I want to stress again, a count will only take one secondary wife, a duke only two, and a king only three. Uh, or Well, that's the maximum, I guess. But your children, since you're their mother, can have the total amount no matter their rank. So again, that is why I would definitely uh, say make sure that your children are landed, your sons. I don't believe that they can actually have uh, the three secondary wives if they are not landed. I think that is cut down to cut down on the amount of total characters. But yeah, as you see, all of this is working absolutely split, uh, swimmingly. W what are we looking at here? Uh, I, I can't even tell how we're doing in terms of uh, 46 living members. My god, yeah, this is incredibly fast and I think we are already nearing the end right here. In the year 1097, I believe we are going to go until like 1098. I had a legitimized bastard there. I had a bastard just said, hey, welcome to the family. 48 living members and you can just t uh, see it tick up because everybody has so many wives. And then in a second we will have 50 and that is the achievement. This is a very easy one to get if you do it this way because essentially you can do it all in just literally, what, 20 years? No, 30 years actually. Oh, I was a bit slow. If you can do it quicker, let me know. I'm very interested in whether any of you can speed it up even more. But this was the guide for this one. Now, that being said, I would of course like to thank the members of the channel that are making videos such as this one possible. Thank you for supporting the channel direct, dear barons, accounts, and dukes. If you also want to support the channel, then check out the join button right underneath the video. For now, later. Alligator.